Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Florida, uh, Florida Orthopedic Society for inviting me down here to speak about this uh, study. Um, special thanks to my advisor and uh, mentor, uh, Dr. Hud Berry, for his support in this study. Uh, just a review, uh, benign bone tumors can arise in uh, inauspicious areas. Uh, they can be pelvis, sacrum, sometimes even the scapula, and they can present challenging uh, surgical corrective uh, options and leave the patient with significant uh, mor morbidity from any surgical procedures. Specifically, uh, giant cell tumor and polyastotic fibrous dysplasia are aggressive uh, osteolytic lesions that uh, can cause persistent bone pain and uh, pathologic fractures, uh, and also, if left untreated, can uh, cause significant morbidity underlying mechanism of which is uh, osteoclastic overreaction, uh, bone uh, resorption, and uh, ex expansile remodeling, as seen here. Now, bisphosphonates uh, have shown to be effective in uh, treatment of certain uh, conditions such as osteoporosis, Paget's disease, uh, hypercalcemia, malignancy, and uh, METs to the bone. Uh, and their mechanism of action is uh, that they inhibit osteoclastic, osteoclastic function by inducing uh, uh, apoptosis or cell death. Uh, currently, there's eight different types of uh, bisphosphonates. There are non-nitrogen uh, containing and nitrogen containing uh, types. The ones that we see and use now more of the nitrogen containing types because they are uh, more potent. Of those, uh, zelendronate uh, appears to be the most potent. It's about 70 times that of uh, alendronate and uh, 500 times that of pimidronate. Right now, it's only FDA approved uh, for the use of hypercalcemia, malignancy, and uh, metastatic osteolysis. So in our study, we uh, retrospectively reviewed six uh, cases of patients with uh, uh, benign aggressive uh, bone tumors uh, in locations that presented uh, poor surgical options uh, or that were so extensive that uh, uh, they also uh, presented poor surgical options. Um, four of those were giant cell tumors and two of them were polyastotic fibrous dysplasia. They were treated with a uh, six to 24 month course of zelendronate. Usually it was a uh, Q monthly dose uh, over six months and then spread out every three months after that for either six or to 12 months. And then this was followed by a uh, maintenance weekly dose of uh, lendronate PO. The average follow-up of the six patients was 35 months, and favorable outcomes were measured by resolution of symptoms and tumor consolidation and bony reconstitution re, uh, on uh, radiographs. So five of the patients uh, demonstrated radiographic signs of bony re, uh, reconstitution, and clinically, they had resolution of all their symptoms and improvement in their activity level. One of the patients, despite uh, initially uh, having improvement in her symptoms clinically, as well as some radiographic uh, improvement, uh, had, had a, a scapulectomy due to un unremitting pain from a pre-existing glenoid fracture. There were no major complications or side effects. However, one patient did complain of a headache on uh, the day that he had his Zometa treatments. I provided some uh, case examples for you. First case, 18-year-old uh, female who presented uh, with complaints of a right groin uh, pain during her dance class. On physical exam, she had fullness and tenderness of her superior ramus and pubis area. She had pain with a resisted adduction and internal rotation. And uh, plain x-ray CT scan MRIs were obtained, which uh, showed a uh, uh, giant cell tumor. And then the biopsy confirmed this. Uh, she began treatments with uh, zelendronate uh, monthly for six months and then spread out every three months for a year, three months for a year. Uh, and then followed by uh, PO uh, lendronate treatments uh, for another 12 months. And she was followed for a total of uh, 33 months. So again, here's her uh, lesion here. Initially, uh, after six months of treatment, you can see the bony consolidation uh, and, uh, and reconstitution here. Again, six months of CT scan. Uh, shows this uh, lytic lesion, uh, and then a year later shows how much uh, reconstitution and consolidation she has. And then at nearly three years, she is fully uh, reconstituted. Uh, 
More importantly, she had total resolution of her symptoms. She was able to go back to all of her activities, including dancing. She had no complications um, or side effects from this. Uh, the second case of which is a 29-year-old uh, golfer, has a history of uh, polyastotic fibrous dysplasia of the humerus and uh, proximal radius. He also had one on the uh, contralateral proximal radius. Uh, about six years prior to presentation, he had, his, he had a uh, humerus fracture that was treated with Ender's rods. Uh, his major complaint was that he had a difficult time playing golf due to pain and limited range of motion. Um, physical exam, uh, he had a hard tender swelling, proximal forearm and uh, distal arm, uh, and the range of motion was limited to uh, 60 to 100 degrees. He had pain with resistant internal external rotation and uh, near loss of um, forearm rotation. Uh, he was, began treatment with uh, zelendronate monthly for six months and followed again uh, with zelendronate uh, for uh, thereafter for maintenance. And he was followed for a total of 42 months. See here is initial x-rays when, when he presented to us. And uh, at 12 months, you can see some uh, bony uh, reconstitution and consolidation of his tumor. But despite the, uh, the subtle changes in the x-ray, uh, more importantly, his symptoms improved over the first three months. His range of motion increased to um, 30 to 120 degrees. He had no forearm tenderness. And uh, most importantly to him, his golf drive increased from 190 to 250 yards. At uh, uh, about three and a half years, um, follow-up, he still didn't have any recurrence of his symptoms. Uh, so, uh, bisphosphonates have been studied a little bit in uh, treatment of giant cell tumors. Uh, in this uh, recent retrospective case control study that was published, looked at 44 patients uh, with appendicular giant cell tumor that were treated um, with uh, intralesional curatage and uh, bone graft reconstruction. They were all uh, given uh, adjuvant, excuse me, 24 of them were given adjuvant uh, bisphosphonate treatment. And when comparing the, the two groups, they noticed a statistically significant and clinically significant uh, decreased local uh, recurrence rate. Uh, and then Chang uh, looked at uh, 16 patients that he treated with uh, pomidronate uh, both after the uh, biopsy as well as before uh, intralesional curatage, and he found that. Uh, the permigenate induced apoptosis of osteoclasts like giant cells. With regards to uh, bisphosphonates in the treatment of uh, polyostotic fiber dysplasia, Zacharin looked at uh, nine children over two years uh, and treated them with uh, permigenate and found that it uh, significantly reduced bone pain and, as well as fracture rate and increased their mobility. Um, it also had a good safety profile and he continued uh, to uh, follow three of those children for eight to ten years, uh, but found out that it didn't prevent any expansion of the lesions. They still uh, progressed somewhat. So there are many unknowns. Um, uh, we don't know the, the dosing regimen. Um, we, we treated all our patients in Q monthly initially and then spread them out, but um, it's kind of variable. Uh, and then our treatment duration was based on their symptom level. We don't know if we should continue treating these patients or stop earlier or what. Um, and then the risk of long-term treatment, what is, what is that risk? Uh, well, there have been reports of uh, jaw osteonecrosis as well as uh, brittle bone disease uh, causing subtrochanteric femur fractures. Um, and so those still need to be studied. So in conclusion, it appears that bone uh, benign osteolytic lesions respond well to uh, zelegenate uh, and you can see this with the bony uh, reconstitution and mineralization. Um, it also appears to be safe and effective uh, for uh, aggressive osteolytic bone tumors that are benign. Uh, however, larger prospective uh, studies need to be performed with a longer term follow up uh, and with you know, validated outcomes measures such as SF36. Thank you.